Hi, 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 and welcome to LNA Does Audio Stuff. If you like Ableton Live, then you're in the right place because I'm obsessed about Ableton Live. And if you are as well, then subscribe and hit the bell icon because this place is fun for you then. And you learn a lot about Ableton Live from my channel. Today, you will learn about clip launch controls and specially follow action and how to do creative generative songs using these tools. So let's get into it now. <laughs> So let's just talk first of what is clip launch controls. Where can you find them? This is slightly different if you're in Ableton Live 10 and Ableton Live 11. I'm in 11, so if something looks weird, then that's because of you're in a different version. So I'm gonna go to samples and one shots. From there, I'm gonna go to stabs. <coughs> And I'm just going to go and get like four clips and put them in an audio track. And if I now click one of them, you can see that we get the clip editing view on. And from there, there is this triangle with stripes. So we are going to go to there and that is where the clip launch controls are. Part of clip launch controls, we have follow action. So the first section here, when we activate the follow action, you can see that this area also lights up. These controls are amazing for the fact that when you click one clip, it will activate another one, activate another one. So you create this like a chain reaction of clips just kind of playing each other or, you know, you can automate the clips to do things. And that is really, really cool. And also you can use them in live performance and also music production in creative ways. So what we will do now is we're going to make sure that example, this clip, when it's activated, it will also activate that one. When this one is activated, it will activate that one. So then they will go into this eternal loop of just playing each other and it's great. We're going to go to the piano bang. And then from here, we have two options. We can go to one of these drop down menus here and you can see a lot of different options. So these are the actions. What will happen when this clip ends? Will it example stop it? Will it play again? Will, the, will it go and activate the previous clip, the next clip, the first clip on the track, the last clip on the track, any of these clips on the track or another clip on the track so it can play itself? Or will it jump into a completely different scene and you can set the scene here? So. You can see that on the left and right, you have the same options. So this under them, you have this percentage control and this is to control what is the chance that it will go to the next. So let's say example, now we have 40% chance that it will go to the next one and 60% chance that it's going to stop. Let's put this in action. We can put just the left side working, nothing on the right side, 100% chance that it's going to go to the next one. So we know it's definitely going to go to the next one. And now we're going to go into here on the second clip, follow action, activate that and go to the previous one. 100% chance it's going to go to the previous one. You can see under there, there's also linked or unlinked. If it's linked, it will play the clip one time, twice or three times or four times. How many times is that clip going to be played? You can see here it says just clip end because the loop is not warped or looped. So if you activate the warp and loop, now the clip can also be played several times here. If we have it as unlinked, you have measurements, you have bars, beats and 16 notes. This measurement when it's unlinked is amazing for the fact that we can customize rhythms and do really cool rhythmic patterns. So let's just have it linked right now and see what happens. So the first one is activating this one. This one is activating that one. Let's activate them. Whoa, that was surprising me. I'm going to put the volume down. So as you can see, they just keep on activating each other one after the other. In the master channel, we also have in Ableton Live 11 the same thing. So if you go to the scenes and click the numbers, you can see we have actual clip controls here as well. We can also control on the scene tempo and time signature for each scene, which is cool. And also for follow action, we have the same thing. We can go next and then from verse, we can go previous. <laughs> Beautiful. 
they keep on activating each other. How cool is that? Let's go into the section number two of this video, which is showing a really cool generative way of using this, which is good for creating ideas for songs, ideas for patterns, or using this as a live performance or installation method. So we could go and find some cool samples that I think could fit together. So I'm just going to put this cello stuff there. Okay, so we have a little bit of clips there. Name that strings. And the second one, we're going to go and add some drums. So in here, I could go chop and swing and then from samples, uh, one shots, drums. And then let's go and add first a kick. Kick on the top there. And then we're going to go and add a snare. And then we're going to just add a hi-hat. There we go. Okay, so first let's go and generate a rhythm using the strings. So what I'm going to do is highlight them all. So holding down shift and selecting all. I'm going to go to the clip launch controls, follow action, activate that. And now I'm going to play around with the follow action. Let's put any. So it will play for all the clips, literally just randomize it fully. Because all of them are quite long samples, as you can see, what I want to do is just kind of get the first steps from them. So what I'm going to do is unlink it and have it as one bar. So it will just play nothing else than one bar and then it will go to the next one. Oh. Little bit of delay. So some of them are not warped and looped, so I'm just going to do that as well so that this measurement is going to be a little bit more accurate. And they can also be obviously like different lengths as well. So some of them I could actually just leave in one bar because why not? And that can add a lot to the rhythm. It's being very random right now and I'm loving it. So now we have a cool rhythm going on. Awesome. I'm actually kind of liking that. It's quite atmospheric. It has a lot of texture and interesting ideas. So now we're going to go and do the same here with the drums. So we have kick, snare, hi-hat. So I'm going to select all of them, go into the clip, edit, and then follow action, activate. And here we're going to have now slightly different options for all of them. First, or loop and warp. And now for the kick one, I'm going to put next and 50% chance that it's going to go either next or jump into scene number three. Either it's going to go next to the snare or the hi-hat. For the snare, what I will do is 100% of other. So either it's going to go to kick or it's going to go to hi-hat. And for hi-hat, let's put 80% chance that it's going to go to the kick. 20% chance to go into play again. Let's make sure that all of them are also looped and warped because we really want to play around with the rhythm in this one. So in all of them, I want to see if we unlink it and we just play around with the, instead of the bars, we play with the beats. So let's just have it first a little bit faster. We can go different rhythms. Or we can go even faster and just go to the 16 notes. I'm not hating that. What's happening? Such a different vibe when it's three on the 16 note or two.
There's cool ideas there, definitely. So let's see how it sounds now with our cellos. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not hating it. Every time you're generating something, just using generative tools, there's a likeliness of random being very not nice. So I am guess sometimes like when you get the random just hitting it right, it's just, woo. With these techniques, it's a lot about the samples you pick, how they work together and how you do the linked and unlinked the measurement of how fast they're playing. Now I'm just going to create two audio tracks here. Uh, let's just color them a little bit. And this one will be strings R and then drums are and the R means recording on the audio inputs of these new audio tracks we're gonna go and pick example the strings for there and then from the new audio track we're gonna go and put three kick alley and that's the drums here only thing we need to do is record activate these tracks activate the clips and it will start recording them <laughs> So this is the drum clip and this is the violin of oh, cello. And there we go. We can deactivate these. And now we have these two clips that we can use to find interesting patterns. For example, I could hear in the end that was quite interesting. It was Oklahoma's house. <laughs> And then I kind of just like what's happening here in the violin. Uh, it's not violin, cello. <laughs> I'm loving that. I'm loving that. This is really cool. And this is basically a, such a good way just now to start a song. Now we can start it. Awesome. Follow action is great. Let's use it more to use also not only for live performance, but also creative, creative techniques like this. Please subscribe. Please hit the bell icon and also come again. Hey, thank you also for all my Patreons who are here. Amazing peeps. They are so awesome. We have so much fun in Patreon. We also do weekly live streams. We have Discord, which is a supportive place to share what you do and have chats about audio. So please check that out also below and have a nice day. Come again. Bye.